Good evening, beautiful people. Welcome to Before I Sleep, a daily evening devotional to help us grow closer to God. Tonight, we are speaking about idolatry. (laughs) Now, when I originally planned this week, I had no intention of talking about idolatry. But as I was reading through Exodus again for yesterday's episode, which by the way, if you didn't watch yesterday's episode, go ahead and check that out because this is basically a continuation. But as I was reading through Exodus and reading about Moses and the Israelites and coming out of Egypt and all of that, I was like, oh, we have to speak about idols. And then I believe it was maybe two Sundays ago, I was watching church online and the pastor was speaking about idolatry and it just aligned with everything that I was speaking about this week. So if you haven't tuned in this week, we are speaking about building godly confidence. Now, let's start with some definitions. So what is idolatry? Idolatry is the worship of false gods. Now, some of the definitions for idol, because there are many. Image, which I'm pretty sure we are all familiar with that one. Likeness, statue, a kind of idol used in household shrine or worship, horrid thing, horrible thing, whatever represents the form of an object, either real or imaginary, phantoms of the mind, a false god. Now, the definition that really stands out is whatever represents the form of an object, either real or imaginary. So it doesn't have to be something that is actually formed because we always think of something that's like a wooden statue or something that is made out of gold, but whatever represents the form of an object, either real or imaginary. Now, yesterday we were speaking about Moses, how God encountered Moses in the burning bush and he told him he was going to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and Moses basically lacked confidence and God is telling him, you don't have to worry. I will be with you. I am going to provide for you. You can do this. And you know, they go back and forth. So yeah, check out yesterday's episode. So we're going to be moving forward in Exodus, but let's backtrack for a minute. So chapter four, Exodus 4, 29 through 31. Then Moses and Aaron went and assembled all the elders of the Israelites Aaron repeated everything the Lord had said to Moses and performed the signs before the people. The people believed, and when they heard that the Lord had paid attention to them and that he had seen their misery, they knelt low and worshipped. So they believe, you know, everything that Moses, you know, relate to Aaron and then Aaron relate to them. They're trusting in God. This is amazing. We're going to be free. Okay, now. Fast forward to chapter 14. The Egyptians pursue the Israelites again. Now the Israelites are scared and they're thinking it would have been better to just stay in bondage. How many times has God called you out of something, delivered you from something, but there are still battles ahead? There are still trials and tests ahead. And you think, oh, I should have just stayed where I was. I should have stayed in the bondage, forgetting what God has already done for you. You haven't put your full confidence in God. Now, moving on, they escape through the Red Sea. They praise God. Exodus 15, one and two. Then Moses and the Israelites sang the song to the Lord. They said, I will sing to the Lord for he is highly exalted. He has thrown the horse and its rider into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Now, I wanted to go back for a minute and read some of these verses because I wanted to show how much we waver, especially in times 
of trials. The Israelites were like, yay, God heard us. God is going to free us. Um, maybe we should have just stayed where we were because now the Egyptians are coming for us and we don't trust you now. And then God delivers them again. Like, oh my goodness, God, we love you. Thank you so much. We are going to worship you. Okay. Constantly flip-flopping. Now, chapter 16, <laughs> they are complaining again. They're hungry, but they're being fed from heaven. God is sending down manna. Now, I bet the bread from heaven, the bread of God is delicious. <laughs> now, moving on to chapter 20, God gives Moses the Ten Commandments. And this is so important. Starting at verse four, do not make an idol for yourself, whether in the shape of anything in the heavens above or on the earth below or in the waters under the earth. Do not bow and worship to them and do not serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, bringing the consequences of the father's iniquity on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands. And then again, Exodus 20, 23, do not make gods of silver to rival me. Do not make gods of gold for yourselves. Remember that verse. Okay. Now chapter 24, the Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and stay there so that I may give you the stone tablets with the law and commandments I have written for their instruction. So Moses goes and meets with the Lord. Now we get all the way to chapter 32. The Israelites are still complaining. They don't have any trust or confidence in God. So this is what they do. When the people saw that Moses delayed in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said to him, come make gods for us who will go before us because this Moses, the man who brought us up from the land of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. I wonder why this was their response. Even if Moses had died, they don't know where he is. Why did they respond in this way? Did they make Moses an idol? Was it that if Moses isn't here, then God isn't real? They never put their confidence in God. Aaron replied to them, take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings that were on their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, fashioned it with an engraving tool, and made it into an image of a calf. Then they said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. What? Now they knew that God, the, the real God, the God, the creator of the universe, delivered them out of Egypt. But because they lacked patience, they didn't know when Moses was going to return from speaking to God on the mountain. They decide to make a false God some image out of gold. They had to melt down gold, create this image. And then they bowed down and worshiped this thing and said, you are the one that delivered us. How crazy is that? <laughs> that is so crazy. Exodus 32, verse seven and eight, the Lord spoke to Moses, go down at once for your people you brought up from the land of Egypt have acted corruptly. They have quickly turned from the way I commanded them. They have made for themselves an image of a calf. They have bowed down to it, sacrificed to it and said, Israel, these are your gods who brought you up from the land of Egypt. This is the most outrageous story, I think, 
because they knew what God had done for them. But they continued to allow fear, lack of patience, lack of love, really love for God to get in the way. They allowed themselves to deceive themselves because of idolatry. And as we have learned from the definition, anything can be an idol. Anything that you exalt over God, you give the character of God, you lean on instead of God can be an idol. You can make a person an idol. You can make your job an idol. You can make social media an idol. Anything can be an idol. And something else that is also so interesting when it comes to idolatry, especially when you hear other believers say it is, well, these are just tools. The question that you need to ask yourself, is this tool something that has been ordained by God? Because oftentimes when people are using these tools, God is nowhere in the mix, nowhere. God has given us creation to benefit from, to use, but we are not to put creation above God. Romans 1, 25. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served what has been created instead of the creator who is praised forever. Are there any idols in your life? Are there any idols in your heart? God wants us to put our full confidence in him not the things that he has created, not the things that we have created either physically or in our mind. All of our confidence needs to be put in him. We don't want to be like the Israelites, constantly flip-flopping. I trust you, God. No, I don't trust you, God. I trust you, God. No, I don't trust you, God. I trust you, God. I don't know where you are, God. So let me make a new God. That grieves the Father. So search your heart. Ask God to search your heart and ask him to reveal to you if there are any idols in your life. Lord, you know us. So search us. We do not want to fall into idolatry. Search our hearts. Purify our hearts. If there is anything that we have put in your place, Lord, remove it from us. Remove it from our lives right now. We want to put our full confidence in you. So Lord, help us get there. Show us ourselves, Lord. Show us our heart. What are those things that we run to instead of running to you? What are those things that we find comfort in instead of finding comfort in you? What are those things that we trust in more than we trust you? Show them to us, Lord, so that we can let them go. Help us to trust you more. Help us to believe you more so that our full confidence is put in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stay connected. Visit the website at tamarajmorris.com backslash before I sleep devotional. Sign up for the newsletter so you never miss an update, including Sabbath weekly. Also join the wait list for the before I sleep journal.